Hi, my name is Dr. Josh Cohen. I am a cataract surgeon in Boca Raton, Florida. And today I wanna to talk about the risks, side effects, and complications of cataract surgery. Now this is a difficult topic because of course, like any doctor and any surgeon, we all want the patient outcome to be as perfect as possible for every patient every time. But that is not the case with everyone. So I wanna talk about some of the things that can go wrong, some of the things that may not go as right as we anticipate, and what to expect generally after you get your cataract surgery performed. So the first thing I wanna talk about is just generally, very broadly, cataract surgery is very safe. It's one of the most commonly performed surgeries in the US and around the world, and the vast majority of patients undergo uncomplicated cataract surgery without any issue whatsoever. Minimal pain, minimal discomfort, and good visual outcomes that are an improvement from their vision before surgery. Fortunately, when things don't go right, the more serious and vision-threatening complications are more infrequent or more rare than the more common, less problematic complications and side effects. So I'll outline a few of those right now. So the first thing that can happen is surface irritation or dry eye. And this is because we do make incisions in the cornea and the cornea is held open for a period of time, usually, you know, 10, 15 minutes or so during the procedure. And that can lead to dryness, exposure, sometimes abrasions or scratches on the cornea. And these can be uncomfortable. This can lead to a far body sensation or irritation or even longer term dry eye symptoms uh, like redness and sensitivity to light, as well as ocular surface irritation, of course, uh, that may require additional treatment, drops, uh, sometimes even prescription medications or other interventions. Generally, most cases of dry eye, certainly any scratch of the eye should heal without any complication, but sometimes the, some of these symptoms can persist for a few months or years after surgery. The next thing that people can experience is glare or halos or unwanted visual phenomena that can occur uh, after the lens is implanted. And this could be due to a few different things, the shape and design of the lens, different types of lenses like multifocals, for example, can contribute to glare or halos or rings around lights in certain situations. Sometimes people can see like a crescent of light or shadow on the edges of their vision. And that can be due to how light interacts with the uh, manufacturing design of the lens. That's called a dysphotopsia. These general adverse uh, qualitative experiences can occur 5-10% of the time, sometimes higher depending on the type of lens selected. But nonetheless, these can be a little more difficult to treat. Sometimes we have to adjust the pupil size with medication or even additional surgery to reposition or exchange the lens in cases where the patients are particularly symptomatic. The next issue is blurry vision due to a residual refractive error. In other words, the lens choice that we plan for based on calculations and the patient's measurements may not always be perfectly accurate and that can leave the patient nearsighted, farsighted, or an astigmatism and these can usually be treated with glasses contacts or additional refractive surgery but just be aware that sometimes even with the best of intentions and perfectly performed surgery the refractive outcome may not be perfect now the next group of problems are somewhere in the one to five percent range um, they are a little bit less common but a little bit more problematic for patients and may require additional interventions the first is inflammatory related problems now during surgery any surgery there is inflammation that results and we can control that with medications like steroids and NSAIDs, but sometimes the inflammation can affect the tissues of the eye in unwanted ways like the cornea where it can cause it to swell. This can be difficult to manage and can cause blurry vision for you know a period of time after surgery. Sometimes additional surgery like a corneal endothelial transplant can be needed to restore vision in rare cases. You can also get swelling that affects the iris that can lead to scarring around the edges and drainage pathway of the eye that can lead to pressure problems as well as inflammation in the back of the eye in the retina. The retina can thicken as a result of inflammation that's called cystoid macular edema, and this requires a longer course of steroids and NSAIDs, sometimes additional management with a retina doctor who can maybe even give injected medicines if necessary. The next problem would be an eyelid droop. Because the eyelid is held open mechanically with a lid speculum during the procedure, sometimes this can damage the tissue and muscle structure of the eyelid, causing it to droop. Usually this resolves on its own, but it may not and may require additional treatment. The next concern would be poorly controlled pressure after surgery. This could be too low due to a leaky wound or due to aggressive inflammation or even too high uh, due to retained fluids in the eye or other issues related to pressure control. Now, high pressures can be damaging over a period of time, lead to irreversible vision loss or glaucoma, which is damage to the optic nerve, or low pressures can lead to infection risk or poorly controlled refractive outcomes because the eye and lens position may not be stable. Nonetheless, controlling pressure is important and the responsibility of your doctor to make sure that they see you and follow you appropriately if you do have pressure problems. 
However, sometimes starting medications to control pressure may lead to other problems like inflammation or swelling of the retina, like I just mentioned. So sometimes these problems can overlap. Furthermore, taking steroids to control inflammation over a long period of time in some patients can lead to elevated pressures. So sometimes we have a whack-a-mole situation where treating one problem can lead to others. But nonetheless, that is our job to kind of manage and mitigate and uh, you know determine what the best course of action is for you. So don't be too concerned if you do experience these, uh, these problems because they usually can be treated without any long-term harm. The next issue is a intraoperative complication, but nonetheless something to be aware of, and that's iris complications. Sometimes the iris may not dilate well enough for surgery. That can lead to a difficult view, which can lead to other complications. Or sometimes the iris can be unstable or literally floppy, and this could be as a result of older age, or sometimes people who have taken prostate medications like Flomax, sometimes that can lead to a condition called floppy iris, where the iris uh, uh, basically protrudes out of the wound during surgery, can lead to damage to the iris tissue, which sometimes can cause glare or an irregular pupil. So these are some things to be aware of, and sometimes the surgeon may need to take additional precautions to do the surgery uh, safely and completely in the event that these situations occur. The next group of complications are Basically in the 1%, give or take, these are capsule-related problems. This has to do with a damage to the support system of the lens. So when we do cataract surgery, there is a capsule or outer membrane of the lens, which is the cataract, and we open that up delicately, either with a laser or by hand, and then we gain access to the inside materials that we remove during surgery. What's left behind is a thin membrane or posterior capsule, and this should be intact during surgery. If it's damaged during surgery, that can lead to lens material falling in the back of the eye, that can promote the healing time, cause inflammation and other issues. Sometimes that requires additional surgery to treat or it can cause the contents behind the lens, the vitreous, to come forward, which can make wounds more difficult to seal and can cause irregularity or instability in the lens platform and increase infection risk as well. So these are complications that result in violation of the posterior capsule or a posterior capsule rupture. These uh, happen uh, earlier in surgical training because of just the mechanics of how lens surgery is done, but can happen even in the most experienced surgeons. Uh, it's just one of those things to be aware of. And the next capsule-related complication is instability in the support system itself. There are zonules, kind of like the springs in a trampoline that keep the lens centered, and uh, certain conditions like pseudoexfoliation or connective tissue disorders like Marfan syndrome can sometimes cause these zonules to weaken, causing the whole lens to be decentered, what we call subluxed. And this is a challenging thing to treat. Sometimes this can happen during or even after surgery, but this requires additional surgical interventions to correct fully um, and sometimes results in the doctor not able to put the lens in the desired location and may need to put it somewhere else within the eye. But nonetheless, capsule-related complications is something that is very important to be aware of and something unique to cataract surgery. One other complication that is also quite rare, less than 1%, maybe one in 400 or so, would be a retinal detachment or damage to the retina itself. This can be due to, again, pressure problems or due to retained lens fragmentation. Um, but nonetheless, this can happen also in patients who are very nearsighted or have long eyes. But retinal detachment after surgery is something that is associated with usual symptoms, blurry vision, flashes, floaters, and when identified and treated quickly, can usually result in good visual outcomes. But this is something that can happen, so ask your doctor about your particular risk. Now, the last group of complications are quite rare, less than one in a thousand, but these, unfortunately, can be vision-threatening to the point where you could lose your vision, maybe even lose your eye in extreme situations. But the first is a bad bleed behind the eye. This is due to uncontrolled blood pressure during surgery or around surgery. Um, and sometimes it's completely random, but thankfully very uncommon, less than one in three or 4,000 on average. But a suprachoroidal hemorrhage can lead to bleeding behind the eye, causing uh, damage to the retina and intraocular tissues, resulting in very poor vision. And the last and kind of most fear dreaded complication related to cataract surgery would be an intraocular infection or endophthalmitis. Now, an infection certainly can affect the wounds or even the cornea after any surgery. That would be a corneal ulcer, which is certainly a problem, but something not usually devastating. But an infection inside the eye certainly can be. This is associated with severe pain, redness, discharge, or cloudy 
uh, vision within the first days of surgery. Um, usually these symptoms will present within the first week, but this is a big deal. So if you have any concerns after cataract surgery, your vision is not improving, this is the one thing you want to get checked out for. Now this can require additional surgery, either by your cataract surgeon or a retina specialist to treat. And again, can lead to permanent vision loss if not handled in time or in severe cases. Sometimes this can be treated and the patient does quite well, but nonetheless, this is one of those things to catch early and treat aggressively. Now stepping back for a second, all these risks and complications for cataract surgery, ranging from the mild to the severe, can happen. There are certainly others that I didn't mention. But nonetheless, these are the main categories of problems to be aware of, and know that this is not something that your doctor has not seen before. These are things that we know about and we can treat. Now, do have a conversation with your doctor about your particular risks before you undergo cataract surgery, and make sure that all your I's are dotted and your T's are crossed before entering surgery. Let them know about your medical history, any medications you might be on, and sometimes we ask that you see your primary doctor before surgery just to make sure that there aren't any surprises that we should be aware of during the surgery. Now, like with anything, some of these things are out of our control, but it is in our control to talk with you honestly and to treat these problems as soon as they arise. So if you have any questions or concerns about cataract surgery, feel free to talk to me in the comments below and I hope to get to all those comments. And I hope this is helpful in just kind of stratifying the particular risks, side effects, and potential complications of cataract surgery so that you are more informed. Have a great day and I will see you in the next one.